All right, we've swung by the Matrox booth and uh, wanted to see what uh, these guys had available. Of course, you're probably familiar with the uh, MXO line of converters for monitoring and things like that, and, and uh, you guys have been making all kinds of different video converters for a long, long time. Um, a long, long time. I remember looking at this stuff back in the 90s, so it's yeah. been around for a while. I'm with Charles Amiot here, and uh, we got a new product that I didn't even know was available, hadn't even heard of it before, and that is a uh, micro-quad multi-viewer, so I'm going to have Charles tell us about it. Yes, uh, it's called the MicroQuad, the Matrox MicroQuad. will be available at the end of July. Uh, it is a 4 SDI in, 2 HDMI, so we deal with 3G, HD, and SD, SDI, so all the way up to 1080p60. We take that 1080p60 content with Matrox uh, proprietary scaling and the interlacing filtering, 10-bit scaling. Uh, we uh, shrink those uh, high-quality output to four uh, quadrants here that you can see behind us. Um, there is this uh, red tally box here that you can move with the hard Hardware buttons directly on the unit and uh, this is these are two purposes the first purpose is to follow the audio so right now we listen to the audio from this source then the audio from that source but in a concert type of application here you can lock the audio to the primary input using a dip switch uh, the second purpose of this tally box is to tell you which channel you're gonna go full screen in so right now we're gonna go full screen on this keyboard player and then I can go from one input to the next and then to the next again and then back, let's say, to full screen. Uh, what's also really neat with this product is that you don't need to have your sources gen locked. So it's a full time-based corrector, frame synchronizer, and there's also an audio resampler in there. So uh, there, as you can see, there's no video tearing, uh, there's no uh, artifacts, and the audio will output very, very cleanly. Uh, so like I said, it will be available uh, by the end of July for 995 US dollars. Yeah, that's fantastic, and for a, uh, like a camera preview monitor or something like that, uh, where you just need to see your four images to see how they're framed up and all that kind of thing and instead of spending a ton of money on rack mount monitors this might be a great way to go with that so this is a really cool product and I'm uh, I'm interested in playing with that a little bit and now uh, you've also been doing some updating on the uh, the convert DVI pro line or convert DVI plus and convert DVI um, I looked at that uh, back in the fall and we, we kind of looked at our, the beta versions of the Mac drivers and you've done some major updates with the Mac drivers for that product as well Yes, uh, we brought the full functionality of our PC drivers to the Mac platform. So we brought the region of interest, uh, logo overlay, uh, proc amps controls, and um, and uh, and uh, I have a blank here. Keying. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, in keying. Can we edit that out or? No, we'll just leave it. In. Well, there's no, there's no editing here. We just keep going. It's it's live as live as it happens. We're all tired too. It's been it's like day three of the show, guys. So it's been a long week. So yeah, keying as well, and um, and that's for the plus. The regular version we brought upscaling actually, which I forgot to mention to you earlier, and also uh, automatic input detection. So now you can connect any device to the input without the need of the computer, and it will automatically detect the incoming signal to output to a predefined resolution. So by default, any new any new devices or when you flash the new drivers in, uh, we flash a new uh, a new 720p output uh, when the when the device is not connected to the computer and. Uh, and then, then it will output that I predefined resolution. If you need to change the resolution, simply connect it to a Mac or a PC now, and uh, and and you can change the resolution, program the unit, and you're good to go for uh, for using it. Right here, we have actually a demo where you're, we're scan converting an output from an iPad. And uh, it's, it's really cool, actually, because you can use an iPad now uh, to, to, to scan, convert the iPad, and use it as a, as a touch screen. It's a really cool concept. That's awesome. And the, the auto detection is a big deal, because in the, initially you had to connect it to a computer that had the right resolution, and there was a lot of, a lot of jumps, hoops you had to jump through to get it to work. And uh, now to be able to auto detect, just plug and go, that's a really big deal. Um, and then you've also said something about the new uh, CS6 uh, drivers that you have available. Yes, the CSC drivers, uh, we're showcasing them here at NEB 2012. Uh, they will be available shortly after Adobe releases uh, Adobe CS6. So uh, they're very, very stable driver, and we're really proud of the work that our team has done on these drivers. Awesome. So Matrox has just a huge line of conversion, monitoring, um, ingest, and output card devices, all that kind of stuff. So uh, visit their website, matrox.com, right? Yes, matrox.com forward slash video. Yep, forward slash video. That'll get you to all their video products. And uh, take a look. They, they more than likely have a product that uh, will solve some problems that you have. So appreciate you taking the time and uh, enjoy the rest of the show.